Okay, yesterday we did some analysis and talk about the spate of construction that will be going on under the new administration for social and social roads, bridges, reconstruction, rehabilitation, whatever you call it. So, uh, you know where to uh, put your money and who to follow. The crude oil business is also there. It's still the backbone of Nigeria's um, economy. So let's talk a little bit uh, to this. Uh, let's chat to this a little bit with Ada Akonobi, who is an economist and one of the research analyst firm at Financial Derivatives. And they bring us this set of data, well-researched data, every Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you very much, folks. It's nice to have you. Thank you, Bozo. Okay. Um, uh, let's chat to oil a little bit. And um, look like things are getting slightly better, isn't it? We started the week around 20, 21% decline year to date in oil prices. Now, looks things are hanging around 18%. And well, if you look at oil prices from yesterday and today, prices went up mainly because of the geopolitical tension between Russia and Turkey. And again, prices uh, went up. Prices are going up now because of the release from the EIA that crude inventories actually dropped smaller than most analysts expected. So there was a, uh, sorry, I, I apologize. Crude inventories rose. Uh, to about 1 million barrels, much smaller than most analysts expected. A uh, Wall Street Journal analyst expected a rise of about 1.2, and API expected a rise of about 2.6 million barrels. And again, the U.S. production is declining, but at a slower pace. So uh, U.S. production last week declined about 17,000 barrels. So that is what's driving prices now. But then I feel this is just temporary because there are still the fundamentals of the story of supply and demand. The world is still awash in oil. In <laughs> summary, where we are right now is about quote and quote stage managing. Uh, yes, and, and I believe that low oil prices, this is just a phase because most experts believe that in the next three years, prices will rocket again. But then for 2015, the rest of 2015 going into 2016, there are a lot of factors that most uh, experts will be looking at. We have the first decision, the US GDP uh, result came out and they actually grew uh, most. 2.3%? Uh, it's 2.3%. But, but the US was chasing Nigeria. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. We did 2.84. Yeah, well, yeah. They grew. The US did 2.3. <laughs> yes, they, they okay. grew. I Very mean, most analysts expected a 1.5% growth, but it was much higher. Uh, you have OPEC meeting coming up. Although OPEC has expressed uh, concerns working with other members, but only if they too. Uh, will agree in cutting production. So we have the Chinese as well, the, uh, the information from China. The um, an official data from the uh, manufacturing PMI actually was lower. So in, in, in the month of November, it was about 42.3 as opposed to 43.6. And the non-manufacturing index as well was lower. So there's a slow growth in China. So these are the three stories actually pushing oil prices, Saudi Arabia, the US, and China. And uh, China, we know, is transitioning into a new economy. So they were more industrial based, but now they're more service and a, a, a consumer led economy. So this, there will be slow growth in China for a while until it picks up again. So generally, global demand is dropping. Production is still increasing. OPEC is increasing production. Iraq is increasing uh, um, production. Iran has said to OPEC, uh, Saudi Arabia, the kingpin, please, you need to make space for us because when we come into the market, we are looking to you know, add more uh, uh, barrels uh, uh, into the world. So there's just that uh, uh, problem of uh, global supply and global demand. But with the cut down in investment, uh, there's been uh, there's been about 20 percent or more of investment dropping in the oil industry, and we need about we need about 20 or 600 billion dollars to continue to um, uh, refine or continue to produce oil because the wells are depleted. So if now if you have a production going up. In the next four, five years, the oil wells will dry up because there's no investment. So that imbalance will come back again. May I change the conversation? <laughs> the fuel in my car, the food in my belly. So let's talk about agriculture products and what I eat, drink. Okay. Shall we? So let's yes. talk about agri. Uh, so, so when I put fuel in the car, I'm going to put some fuel in my stomach as well. Talk to us about agri. The Climate change story, the conference is going to start in Paris, hundreds of delegates will be there. The impact is creeping in on us. Look at South Africa, the cattle 
the farmlands and there are issues with the weather conditions, very harsh weather. Talk to us about how much of this will, impri will impact perhaps if we have that. Now, the price of cattle in South Africa is becoming something else because cattle are dying, auctions almost every week. The folks are first selling off, the farmers are selling off their, their, their cattle because the, the, the grounds are patched. There's no, there are no fresh vegetation to, for these cattle to consume. Cocoa is there, wheat is there, and uh, some folks think that, look, this is the best time to get in and again. Well, generally, towards the end of the year, I think it's all uh, relating to El Nino, the impact El Nino will have in most agri-commodities. And in some countries, it leads to dryness. In some countries, it leads to excess rain. So these are affecting most agri-commodities. However, for grains, there's still ample or huge inventories. So there's still a bit of volatility in prices, but the fundamentals still remain that there's enough uh, stock to, la uh, to last through. But we still have the problem for a uh, supply deficit in sugar and cocoa. How do we arrive at huge inventories of wheat and things like that when millions of people around the world go hungry? <laughs> It's one that like the a world. Very difficult question. <laughs> it, it is a million uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult world. <laughs> it's, a, it's a world you don't understand because you have huge inventories. Exactly. Price of commodities are uh, topsy turvy. Then you have droughts on one hand. A lot of folks can't get food. Then you have even at local markets prices of flour and other things. Folks believe that they're still high. Yes, it, it is a million dollar question because most of these countries that actually have huge inventories, they're still citizens are actually still starving. So uh, I, I, I don't know this. It's a very difficult one. It, it is a million Yeah, because if you, if you have huge inventories, how come the price of flour, and I'm trying to look at this data, uh, if you can put that out for just about one minute, if I can just buy a minute, back for a minute for, from our folks there in production to look at. These products across Nigeria, some of the markets, you folks track Lagos, Kano, and Onicha, you're looking at the price of cassava, maize, flour, sugar, rice, and palm oil. Generally, what will drive most domestic commodity prices this season is the festive period. But some, or some commodities like palm oil, we think it's going to remain flat. We still have the problem with rice and flour. Just, 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 there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, volatility in prices. But then we have the problem of false scarcity and high diesel. So uh, if, if, uh, uh, if transporters factor in uh, the, the inability to uh, you know, get access to fuel, prices of this uh, will go up. But there's just going to be a lot of uh, volatility in, in, in this uh, palm oil, The last time I checked with you folks, palm oil was about 7,000 uh, naira per uh, 25 liters. Now it's about 600, 6,500 in Lagos, 6,700 in Kano, and 6,400 in Indonesia. That looks good. Rice has gone up to about 12,000. I thought it was 10,000 the last time I checked. Well, rice prices will actually go up. We still have the problem of... Uh, not getting access and the to tariff forex, and the all tariff that. and the smuggling of rice. So we know that legal um, importers of rice actually pay 70% to import this uh, to import this product. Okay. But then there's just a lot of uh, a lot of uh, headwinds in that industry. Now the price of look at that on the screen. Maize is around 3,500 and flour at 6,700 per kilogram. Perhaps I'm just going to do away with rice this year and and I just have maize and flour. Perhaps this is a good time to change my diet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because 12,000 for, 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 for 50 kilograms of rice in Lagos, man, I could just have about 10,000 and I buy a kilogram of maize, 50 kg maize and 50 kg of flour. So trust me, you, you need rice. Rice is a very essential commodity in Nigeria. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. Thank you very much, Ada Konobi. Thank you Thank so you very much for having through. me. Uh, economist and research analyst at uh, Financial Derivatives putting those set of data you see on the screen for you, guiding what you buy and what you consume as we end 2015. We'll be right back.